Assad stresses in an interview with the French magazine very much that Syria will not accept to be a toy in the hands of the West, adding that the lack of popular support for the terrorists is the main reason behind the army progress. President al-Assad affirms that terrorism cannot be defeated by airstrikes alone and the alliance did not achieve any tangible results on the ground. Putin says Washington and the West are supporting terrorism and adopting political hypocrisy in their approach to international issues. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yara Dukrikorian from the News Center in Damascus. President Bashar al-Assad has affirmed that airstrikes are not enough to eliminate terrorism and that Syria will not be a toy in the hands of the West. Syria has been attacking terrorism everywhere in the country, regardless of what the U.S. or the coalition is doing, the president stressed. In an interview with the French magazine Paris Match, President Bashar al-Assad said the talk about the coalition's airstrikes being helpful to us is incorrect, affirming that terrorism is a matter of ideology, not organizations or structures. The president said that since the beginning of the crisis, the country has been facing organized terrorism that targeted the state's institutions and has been financially and logistically supported by Qatar and Turkey. The president said... If we hadn't been defending our people, we couldn't have stood steadfast for four years. We are now fighting states, not gangs, the president affirmed. He added that those gangs have been receiving billions of dollars and weapons from various states, including Turkey. Though it is not an easy war from the military aspect, the president went on to say, yet the Syrian Arab army has been advancing in many areas, and any area the Syrian Arab army decided to retake, it was able to do so. In reply to a question, President al-Assad said any president takes or leaves office in any state of the world on the basis of constitutional procedures, not through chaos. The president added, It is not my objective, neither before the crisis nor during it or after it, to remain a president. But we, as Syrians, do not accept that Syria be a toy in the hands of the West. This is clearly our most important objective and principle. In reply to a question about accusations leveled against Syria that it was behind the establishment of ISIL, President al-Assad said ISIL was established in Iraq in 2006 and Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was in American, not Syrian jails. About the spread of the phenomenon of terrorism in the region and the world, President al-Assad said 20 years ago terrorism came from our region, particularly from Gulf countries and Saudi Arabia. Now it is exported to us from Europe, especially France. The highest percentage of the European terrorists who come to Syria is from France. In reply to a question about whether the war declared by the Americans on ISIL was serious, President al-Assad said a tactic that lacks strategy leads to no results and will not defeat terrorism. He considered the American strikes against ISIL from the Syrian airspace as an illegal intervention because they have been made without a UN Security Council resolution and have not taken into consideration Syria's sovereignty. Consequently, they represent a violation of Syria's national sovereignty. He pointed out that there is no coordination between Syria and the United States in striking ISIL, stressing that Syria is attacking terrorism everywhere, regardless of what the United States or the coalition is doing. President al-Assad said, we will cooperate with any French official or government that works for our common interests. But the current French government is working against the interest of our people and that of the French people at the same time. President al-Assad concluded his speech calling for a world where logical and moral relations dominate. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has said Syria has done what it had to do concerning the elimination of its chemical weapons. In a press conference held in New York, al-Jafari said, A year ago, Syria became a full member of the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Agreement. 
What has remained is mere routine issues related to finance and the necessary material we would be supplied with. Now it is up to the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Organization and the donor countries to take the next step. Lebanon's top military commander, Jean Kahouaji, said Lebanon is waging an open-ended war against terrorists, expressing the Lebanese army's readiness to defend the country's stability. Kahouaji pointed out that war against terrorism will continue. As units, the Lebanese army broke into the remote hills and mountains surrounding the big cities, adding the terrorist organization's resort to guerrilla tactics by setting ambushes and detonating explosive devices. It is worth mentioning that seven Lebanese soldiers were ambushed and killed two days ago near Baalbek surrounding hills. The Lebanese army obstructed an Israeli reconnaissance plane that was flying over Riyadh military airport in Al Biqa. An official statement by the Lebanese army said the plane violated Lebanese airspace flying over Baalbek, Riyadh, Zahle, Ashouf, and Al Kharoub region. It then turned towards occupied Palestinian territories. In Iraq, the Iraqi air defense has foiled a third attack on the Mosul Dam and targeted ISIL positions in Salah al-Din and Al-Ambar provinces, inflicting heavy losses upon them. In a statement, the Iraqi defense ministry said Iraqi fighter jets conducted a series of airstrikes against ISIL hideouts in Samarra, killing and wounding dozens of them. The statement added that Iraqi warplanes hit ISIL targets, including missile launchers, and inflicted heavy losses upon them. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said Washington and the West are implementing political hypocrisy and supporting terrorism in Russia and the Middle East, adding that Russia, along with its true allies, are working to enhance international cooperation to face terrorism. Putin's comments were made in his annual address to the Russian Federal Assembly in Moscow. He added that the West and the U.S. want to delude the world that their political hypocrisy is the core of the required policy. He also accused Washington and the West of worsening the Ukrainian situation and aggravating relations between Moscow and Kiev. The Russian president considered anyone he wants to sanction Russia as sanctioning himself, stressing that his country with its military capabilities is capable of defending its interests. Putin also accused Washington of endangering Europe and the whole and the world as a whole by deploying its missile shield in the European continent. Finally, in occupied Palestine, settlers have stormed again the square of Al-Aqsa Mosque from the direction of Bab al-Maghariba under the protection of occupation forces. This as occupation forces continue to impose its policies against Palestinians, setting roadblocks, inhibiting them from entering the mosque and perform their prayers. Meanwhile, occupation troops arrested a number of Palestinians in occupied Jerusalem and parts of the West Bank using tear gas and rubber bullets. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Karun Kirkjan, but after a short break. Good afternoon. A report issued by the Syrian Investment Agency for last month showed that six investment projects have been included in the agency with a total cost exceeded 3.7 billion Syrian pounds. The investments included a project for establishing gas stations, one in the transport sector and four industrial projects. The report also pointed out that these projects will provide 535 job opportunities, noting that the total number of the included projects since the beginning of this year has increased to reach 56 with a total investment cost exceeding 49.41 billion Syrian pounds. In order to meet increasing the demand of the electrical power, the Ministry of Electricity has installed a new transformer in Jeramana city in Damascus countryside. Furthermore, by next week, four other transformers will be installed in the same city to improve the electricity situation in parallel with the other areas that have been listed in the Ministry's plan 
which are suffering from overloading and increasing the number of residents, in addition to targeting the electrical networks by terrorist attacks. Director of the Consumer Cooperation Department at the Ministry of Domestic Trade said that the total sales value in the consumer establishments reached about 3 billion Syrian pounds since the beginning of this year till September, increasing 20% from last year. The director added that the ministry seeks to expand its establishments as a branch for water resources has been established recently in Hama Governorate, in addition to activate other branches which were closed previously. U.S. crude oil rose for a second day as investors weighed an unexpected drop in U.S. crude inventories against their prospects of sustained production from OPEC. Brent gained and futures climbed 1.3%. On the other hand, crude stockpiles shrunk by 3.69 million barrels last week. European stocks were little changed near an almost seven-year high as investors seek indications on further stimulus from a speech by the European Central Bank President. Japanese shares, on the other hand, rose for a fifth day, with the topics index closing at a seven-year high. Gold retreated as the dollar traded near a five-year high before a European Central Bank meeting today that may give indications on further stimulus. Gold for immediate delivery fell 0.4% to reach $1,205 an ounce. Dollars strengthened to within 0.1% of 120 yen, reaching the highest since July 2007, as analysts forecast that the U.S. job growth will increase while Japanese remains in recession. Ladies and gentlemen, with this reach the end of our news, thank you for watching. Have a great day.